Hello everyone, it's me, John Lorden. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch, Case Cracked. Today we're looking into the case of Lucy Ann Johnson, and let's jump right in and get started. Lucy Ann Johnson was born October 14th, 1935, in Skagway, Alaska. She married a man named Marvin Johnson in 1954 and became a housewife. They had two children together, an older girl named Linda and her younger brother, Danny. They lived together in an area called Surrey, British Columbia, and that's in Canada. And Lucy's husband, Marvin, unfortunately had a bit of a bad temper and the man also liked to drink. In September of 1961, when her daughter Linda was only seven years old, Lucy went missing. Um, and Marvin, in a very strange twist, uh, did not report Lucy missing to authorities until May of 1965, nearly a full four years later. Of course, that raised a lot of suspicion, particularly with the police looking into the case and Marvin. Uh, they suspected that there was certainly some foul play. They could only find that a neighbor had seen her once back in September of 1961, and that was the last known sighting of her. So they started looking into the case. They interrogated uh, Marvin. They questioned neighbors, and they even dug through the family's yard looking for evidence and unfortunately uh, nothing was ever found. No charges were ever filed and this case would go cold. Marvin eventually got remarried and asked his kids never to speak about their mother, particularly to their new stepmother. A number of years later, Lucy's son Danny drowns at the age of 20. And Linda continues living on, her daughter Linda, um, keeping only three pictures, the only three pictures she had of her mother, as well as a handful of memories. In the late 1990s, Marvin winds up dying of natural causes. But something interesting happens in June of 2013, over 50 years after Lucy goes missing. The Surrey police start a new program called Missing of the Month, where they feature cold cases to try to raise new exposure to them. Uh, Linda, now in her late 50s with kids and even grandkids of her own, at this point also decides that she's going to start investigating this case herself as well. She finds some old documents mentioning that her mom lived in an area called Car Cross Yukon, a very small town with a population of only a few hundred people, and she lived there prior to marrying Mar Marvin. Uh, in July of 2013, Linda decided to place an ad in a paper called the Yukon News with a photo of Lucy, one of the three that she had kept, and a message under it stating that she was trying to find her family. She pretty quickly receives an email from a woman named Rhonda, and this woman tells her, I think I'm your half-sister and our mom is actually still alive. Lucy had fled to the Yukon, remarried, and had four additional children. Several weeks after being reconnected, or first connected, <laughs> with her half-sister Rhonda, Linda flew out to reunite with her mother. The first day was filled with some stilted conversations, um, a lot of tears, and many hugs. On the second day, Linda actually worked up the courage to ask what happened. Lucy said that Marvin was physically abusive, had been cheating on her, and kept telling her to leave. When she tried to leave with the children, he insisted that she leave them behind. She felt like she had no other choice. Linda very plainly states that she would never leave her own children behind, but she acknowledges that these are somewhat different times, and she's doing her best not to hold any grudge against her mother. She's even considering moving to Yukon so she could be close to her and spend as much time with her as possible. Her mom was 77 years of age when she got reconnected with her. They speak often on the phone, and Linda is very excited for her grandchildren to meet their great-grandmother. Really interesting case, and I love that there was this new program that kind of kick-started the investigation. There was actually this strange twist that kind of happened in it as well, where the police called Linda 
and said, hey, we found your mother. And Linda told the police, no, you didn't. I found her myself. <laughs> so uh, apparently what happened was Rhonda not only called Linda or sent Linda an email directly, but had also called the police that were looking for information on this and let them know the same story. Um, you know, I don't, I imagine it's going to be very tough to try to get over those feelings of a, abandonment. Um, you know, it is certainly sad that Danny was not alive to find out whatever really happened to his mother. Um, but, you know, a lot of strange things can happen with uh, when someone's being abused like that. And in particular, back in the 1960s, I don't think they had the same types of resources um, that we do nowadays, you know, shelters and systems to help protect women that are going through uh, things like that. If they did, perhaps Lucy wouldn't have left her children behind, I'm sure. That was a very difficult thing to to go through for her. Um, so that is it. Thank you for so much for joining me here on Case Cracked. I hope you enjoyed this story. I tried to look for another one that had a little bit of an uplifting ending. Um, I know this one's a little questionable because she missed out on you know over 50 years of being with her mom, but ultimately they still get to share some time together. And from what I can see, Lucy is still alive. So this took place back in 2013, it looks like they've at least had a good uh, few years to try to reconnect and work these things out. Take care, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next show on the Lord Knights channel.